Welcome back. It's time now for On the Radar, where we ask an investing professional what they're looking at in today's markets. We're back with Patrick Horan. He's our featured guest of the morning. He's also principal at Agilith uh, Capital. And you, you, in our earlier conversation, Patrick, on, on what you see ahead in the markets, uh, mm. you said that stocks, uh, you, you expect some multiple compression uh, among high, high multiple stocks, the stocks that really soared in, in 2023 on the basis of multiple expansion. And those include the tech stocks. That's right. That's right. And um, so uh, our, our view is that inflation is more persistent than what's believed. Uh, we, we probably have cycled from uh, last year a high point in uh, the 10 year, U.S. 10 year yield of, of 5% or near 5%. And uh, now we're probably uh, chasing the bottom right now. Uh, we think that, um, that it's probably unrealistic that, that we actually see inflation come down to 2%. Um, so uh, when the market begins to realize that, um, the natural tendency is going to be that interest rates are going up and that's going to be bad for stocks. Uh, that certainly was the case for last year. Uh, but uh, last year in, in 2022 uh, was about a normalization of interest rates. And um, the fear was that central banks around the world that were really acting in unison uh, were, were going to cause an accident. Uh, they were, they were uh, ag too aggressive in their rate hikes, and um, uh, that was going to cause a recession. And that was the reason why stocks were going down. We believe this time around, when we actually do see bond yields rise because of, uh, of persistent, I would call it persistent inflation, inflation is still coming down but we don't think it's going to get to 2%. We, we think inflation lives somewhere around 25 to 3%. Um, and uh, and uh, what we'll probably see are, are cyclically based stocks, uh, low valuation stocks, uh, and, um, uh, and probably uh, small cap stocks. Um, we, we will see them outperform over this next year. Um, and um, what we will probably see also is, is uh, as we kind of mentioned in the last segment, that um, stocks that, that have or companies that have high leverage points uh, of debt uh, will underperform and um, uh, high multiple stocks, uh, growth stocks, if you will, uh, will also underperform. So we think the, uh, the market broadens out. Uh, we think it broadens out to uh, uh, something like 60% of the, the uh, the stocks in the market will probably outperform. And um, I think if you throw out uh, high multiple stocks, um, high multiple growth stocks, and stocks that have lots of leverage, and I'm, I'm talking about you know, something like uh, three and a half times debt to EBITDA, um, I, think, uh, I think your portfolio should actually perform quite well. You mentioned dividend paying stocks in, in passing in our earlier conversation. Why don't you, you spend a little bit more time on what you see ahead there? There are lots of predictions among many of your peers, as you know, that uh, with, with interest rates heading down, share prices of high quality dividend payers, which are many, in many cases are yielding more than 6% right now, should head north. What do you think? Yeah, and that I think uh, I, I, I don't know if it was on your segment, but I, I kind of remember being on BNN and, and talking about a hat size uh, dividend, um, that you don't buy a hat size dividend. So anything more than six is, uh, is a sign that there's something inherently wrong, uh, that the market is not trusting about that dividend. And, um, um, so when you, when you see a high dividend stock I mean, stocks, dividends can hang around for years and years before they have to get cut. Uh, but um, but the the what you really need to see in terms of uh, having confidence in that dividend is a growth rate. It's very important that that uh, you see uh, growth either stabilize or accelerate, uh, and that will give you confidence. And and usually one indication of that is is actually dividend increase. Uh, you rarely see stocks that trade over. Uh, a six percent yield uh, actually have dividend increases, um, so they you become basically wedded to that to that, to that yield, uh, and in hopes that uh, somehow uh, there's some magic in the underlying stock that actually makes it perform. Uh, and what ends up happening is you collect a um, you know you collect a a, a small yield or a six percent yield, 
when in fact the stock, the underlying underperforms and it's, it's, you know, the equivalent of, you know, picking up pennies in front of a steamroller, eventually, eventually you'll get caught and uh, the stock will be down 40% when they, when they cut that dividend. So, um, so you, you really do, uh, you know, this, this whole called so-called high quality uh, dividend, uh, um, you know, period that we went through is a bit of an illusion because we did it with a backdrop of, ultra low interest rates that have not been seen. I, I don't think they've ever been seen to be that low where we actually had negative, negative bonds. Um, it was, it was a, it was an anomaly that, that if you go back in history has never really existed before. Um, it was a function of a belief system that um, a group think, if you will, that all central bankers were involved in. And um, and it has uh, uh, just like every other period, um, it has uh, made for a very dangerous precedent as to what what normal is and what's in people's portfolios. So um, you know, I would uh, I would encourage people to have a have a look at um, you know so-called high quality dividend payers because they were able to pay a, a handsome dividend and increase that dividend. Um, doesn't necessarily mean they can keep it. So, you know, the the first test I would say is uh, take a look at the earnings uh, versus the dividend. And if they're not paying for that dividend with their earnings, you really need to understand the thesis as to how they get that on board. Um, so, uh, you know, I've mentioned in the past, I'm short, uh, I'm sure it's some telcos, um, the, the owner of your, uh, of your station, I'm short, um, I'm short, uh, uh, a pipeline company. Um, and, uh, and I, I think they're, they're going to struggle to, uh, actually, uh, be able to, uh, pay for their debt and rising interest rates and as well as, uh, grow into, uh, the very, very high lofty dividend levels that they have. Okay. That's